the heartbreaking murder of Gannon Stoach. An 11-year-old boy, allegedly killed by one sworn to protect him. Gannon Stoach in Colorado. Source, Remembering Gannon Stoach Facebook page. On the 27th of January, 2020, the mountain city of Colorado Springs, Co., grappled with collective fear when 11-year-old Gannon Stokes went missing. Six weeks before the COVID pandemic rocked the nation, local attention riveted toward the mysterious case. And the community rallied together to bring this little boy home. Gannon Stokes's family moved to Colorado at the end of 2018. The Stokes's neighborhood, Lesson Ranch, is a planned community on the southeast side of Colorado Springs. Many military officers live in Lesson Ranch due to the neighborhood's proximity to three major military bases, and the neighborhood does not experience significant crime levels. Gannon was initially reported as a runaway by his stepmother, Letesha Stoch. But the El Paso County, co-sheriff's office changed Gannon's status to missing and endangered child 24 hours later. The FBI joined forces with the sheriff's office. Colorado Springs Police Department, and El Paso County Search and Rescue to find Gannon. Over 300 neighborhood volunteers searched for the boy in mountainous territory and reservoirs near the Stokes home. Students and teachers at the Grand Mountain School, where Gannon was a fifth grader, wore his favorite color, blue. Residents of southeast Colorado Springs changed their outdoor light bulbs to blue as well, to help Gannon find his way home. And Restoration Church. The church the Stokes family attended, held a vigil for Gannon less than 48 hours after he vanished. Unfortunately, Gannon did not return home alive. On the 3rd of March, 2020, Letesha Stokes was arrested in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, on first-degree murder charges in Gannon's case. She fled to Myrtle Beach in the weeks following Gannon's disappearance before facing extradition back to Colorado. On the 18th of March, 2020, in Pace. Florida, state construction workers found the bludgeoned, stabbed, and shot body of a small boy stuffed in a suitcase. Although discovered 1,400 miles away from the Stokes home, the remains were identified through Gannon's dental records. Damning and overwhelming evidence led investigators to arrest Letesha Stokes. Before he died, Gannon led an extraordinary life. His open heart and his resiliency inspired family and friends alike. And before her arrest, Letesha held press conferences declaring her deep love for her stepson. She pleaded for his safe return on social media. But in an interview with Colorado Springs news station, KKTV, Letesha focused on herself. She claimed those casting suspicion on her would regret their comments, cried out about cyberbullying, and spent much of the interview disparaging Gannon's mother. What would lead a stepmother to brutally murder a child she claimed to love? Were there signs of evil brewing in Letesha before Gannon's murder? Where does the case stand now? A miracle kid. Gannon Jacob Stokes was born on the 29th of September, 2008, in South Carolina. The oldest child and only son of Albert Stokes and Landon Howitt, Gannon was born more than three months premature. At birth, he weighed one pound, six ounces, and doctors gave him a 10% chance of survival. Howitt recalls a doctor telling her if Gannon survived, he would face profound physical and mental disability. Instead, Gannon flourished. He participated in gifted and talented programs in school, and physically, he landed above the average range for boys his age. Gannon's parents welcomed his little sister, Lena, into the world, the 22nd of January, 2012. Lena idolized her big brother, who she called Bubba. The rest of Gannon's family and loved ones called him G-Man, he was their superhero. After Albert and Landon split, the two shared custody of their children. Landon, a health and physical education teacher, remarried and stayed in South Carolina. And Al moved with the kids for his full-time National Guard duty. Al's military career took the Stokes family to Alaska, back to South Carolina, and finally, to Colorado Springs. Gannon had many friends and did well in school. He loved tacos, Nintendo, and the color blue. He spent a lot of time with his father, playing video games and building Lego tables. Al frequently traveled out of town on National Guard training exercises. He was out of town on the day of Gannon's murder. 
and an increasingly frustrated Letesha found herself left as the only adult caretaker for Ganon, Lena, and Harley, her 17-year-old daughter from a previous marriage. Al was in Oklahoma when Ganon died. On the 27th of January, 2020, Letesha kept her stepson home from school. She claimed Ganon had a tummy ache. The last known sighting of Ganon occurred at 10.13 am on the 27th of January, 2020. He was captured by a Stoke neighbor's front door video surveillance, slowly climbing into the back of Letesha's Volkswagen Tiguan. Letesha returned home at 2.19 pm, but Ganon does not show up on this later footage. A woman with issues and a story full of holes. Letesha Stoch, also known as Teshia Orti was born on 4 August, 1983. She received a doctorate in education from Liberty University, a Christian college in Lynchburg, VA. Letesha's first marriage ended in divorce and produced one child, a daughter named Harley. Before marrying Albert Stoch in 2015, Letesha racked up a rap sheet in the Carolinas with domestic violence, battery, and theft charges. She worked as an elementary and secondary school teacher in both North Carolina, where her teaching certificate was suspended, and South Carolina, where she was found in breach of contract, thereby losing her certificate there as well. After moving to Colorado in 2018, Letesha listed herself as a curriculum developer for District 49 in Colorado Springs on her LinkedIn and Facebook profiles. District 49 officials later stated they have no record of Letesha Stoch as an employee at any time. She lasted as a teacher at French Elementary School in Colorado Springs for one semester before the school terminated her. Before Gannon's murder, Letesha went through a three-day orientation to work as a teacher at Mountain Ridge Middle School, Mountain Ridge rescinded her employment offer. In hindsight, Letesha Stoch's social and mental issues are apparent. However, at the time of the murder, she had lived with Gannon as his stepmother for over four years. So when she first called 911 at 6.15 on 27 January, 2020, investigators had no reason to suspect her guilt. Within 24 hours of the first 911 call, Letesha's story wasn't adding up. She initially told detectives that Gannon had walked to a friend's house at 3.15 but hadn't returned. When pressed on simple details about the friend's name, address, and phone number, Letesha couldn't answer. She changed her story and claimed a neighborhood construction worker named Degado had broken into the house, sexually assaulted her, and kidnapped Gannon. After refusing a sacket, Letesha changed her story yet again. She said she was watching Gannon ride his bike when he fell off and hit his head. Two men came out of nowhere and kidnapped him. Albert began to doubt his wife and filed for divorce. When Letesha realized police considered her a person of interest she fled Colorado and drove back to South Carolina. A preponderance of the evidence. A month after Letesha Stocher's arrest, her 32-page arrest affidavit leaked on social media. While she hasn't faced a trial yet, a mountain of concrete and circumstantial evidence points toward her guilt. A look at her recent Google searches revealed searches for apartments, jobs, and dating sites in the Pesacola, FL area. Pesacola is 20 miles away from the Pace, FL location of Gannon's body. Particularly damning search phrases included, why shouldn't my husband choose me over his family, and I'm overdoing everything for my stepkids. The affidavit reveals Letesha tried to purchase a polygraph test from www.fakepolygraph.com. Letesha also searched for the 105 forward slash Perry Park intersection in Palmer Lake, Co., where traces of Gannon's blood and DNA were later found on a piece of particle board. Police believe Gannon's body was first dumped in Palmer Lake and then moved. On the afternoon of Gannon's disappearance, Letesha sent her eight-year-old stepdaughter, Lena, to her room directly after school. She then sent a text to Harley, asking her to pick up cleaning supplies on her way home. The day after she reported Gannon missing, Letesha picked Albert up from the Colorado Springs airport. She claimed she was worried about mileage on her Tiguan. Police later determined Gannon's body sat in the trunk of Letesha's Tiguan for 24 hours. GPS trackers put her at Palmer Lake on February 2, when she may have dumped Gannon's body. A search of Gannon's bedroom revealed a copious amount of blood splatter on the walls and a blood-soaked section of carpet that seeped through and stained the concrete below. After the arrest, 
a police van transported Letesha from South Carolina to Colorado. When the van reached Texas, Letesha managed to slip out of her handcuffs and attacked a sheriff's deputy. The deputy was treated overnight in a local hospital. As she awaits trial, Letesha keeps busy. She wrote a letter to 4th District Colorado Springs Judge Gregory Warner to complain of mistreatment and abuse in jail. In June, 2020, a jailhouse informant disclosed Letesha's plan to escape from the El Paso County Jail. Her lawyers pushed for two mental competency evaluations, and Letesha passed them both with flying colors. In February, 2021, Letesha put forward a legal motion for self-representation. She told the judge she has an ace in the hole. The judge explained the detriments of self-representation but agreed to the request. Letesha's preliminary hearing, initially scheduled for the 11th of March, 2021, will now occur in May, 2021. Gannon's memory lives on. Due to pandemic constraints, the family did not hold a funeral service for Gannon until the 14th of August, 2020. Only family and close friends attended in person, but hundreds attended online. Albert Stoch finds solace in his faith and Gannon's unwavering belief in God. He said because of Gannon's trust, he will never stop believing. There is a multitude of Facebook memorial pages dedicated to Gannon's memory. And at Grand Mountain School, a memorial wall for Gannon was unveiled in March, 2021. Emblazoned across the wall, a quote from an unknown author reads. Gone yet not forgotten, although we are apart, your spirit lives within us, forever in our hearts.